said to Nicodemus, except you be born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus was sent forth from the Father to give you eternal life. It was God's plan to redeem you unto Him. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. Hi, I'm Reverend Victoria Fury. So happy that you're tuning in to these programs every week and learning the Word of God and the ministry of God's Spirit upon Times of Refreshing. Upon Times of Refreshing, you're going to hear a lot of messages on salvation and deliverance and healing and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the integrity of God's Word, His Holy Gospel. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you for the viewing audience, Lord. Thank you for every family and every household. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit moving in their lives, moving in their homes and their families, Father. In the name of Jesus, I, we honor you today, Father, on times of refreshing. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to come and minister the Word of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Last week we were just teaching on the lines of heaven and scripturally uh, on heaven. And I haven't got into the book of Revelation yet. Kind of doing a groundwork of the word of God, of foundational truths of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What Jesus spoke about heaven. Last week we ministered how you become like a little child. Humble yourself like a little child. If we don't humble ourselves like a little child, we will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And we're not to offend these little ones that believe in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Well, today we're going to minister on, uh, on heaven what Jesus said about himself, how he came from heaven. And first we're going to start out in the book of Luke, chapter 9. Now Jesus sent out the 70 and gave them a commission to preach the gospel of the kingdom of repentance and to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out devils. And he said, freely you have received, now freely give. And so they came back rejoicing because the spirits were subject to them in, in Jesus' name. See, he delegated his authority. When he delegated his authority to those 70, there was an anointing that came from the Lord to their lives that when they went in his name, the spirits came out. Well, in Luke chapter 10 Verse 19, Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, when God gives you power, his power won't hurt you. It gives you authority over the enemy. Jesus said, Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject to unto you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. See, when our names are written in heaven, it's written in the Lamb's book of life. And that's when we come to a place of true humility and humbleness in our heart and our life, recognizing that we were lost. Or maybe you're out there today and you are lost. You're lost and you're in need of a Savior to save you from your sins. Well, Jesus Christ came for you 2,000 years ago, and he took all the offenses of every person that was born upon the earth, and he took transgression and iniquity. He took pain and sorrow and suffering, sickness and disease upon his own self. On the cross, he bore the sins of many. And he delivered us from our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we were healed. That's out of uh, the book of Isaiah, the prophet, chapter 53. Jesus justified us 
by his own blood at the cross, declaring his righteousness, and the Father raised him from the dead, the justification of faith, God raised Jesus from the dead. So when you believe in Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord, you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, the Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. For with your heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confessions made to salvation. There's no other salvation in any other name but the name of Jesus because he was God manifested in the flesh. He became like you to deliver you for you to become like him because when you receive him, the spirit of God's son enters your heart by the Holy Spirit. He gives you a brand new spirit, brand new heart. You become born of his spirit, washed in the blood of the lamb, forgiven of all transgression, Forgiven of all sin. He wipes it away as far as the east is from the west. So far he removes your iniquity from you. And then he breathes into you the spirit of the living God. The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. He will lead and guide you into all truth. See, Jesus is the truth. He said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Hallelujah. Now Jesus stated in Luke chapter 10 verse 21, in that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Notice he says, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hid these things from the wise and the prudent and has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father. And no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. So the, Jesus, the Son of God, reveals the Father. And when we come to the acknowledgement, when we honor the Son, we honor the Father that sent him. Jesus is the one that gives you eternal life. Apart from Jesus, there's eternal damnation. Jesus paid the penalty and the judgment for sin to make you free to bring you into the newness of life that is in him. He came that he might live in you, and the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil, and that was sin and death. Sin and death was destroyed at the cross, and he was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. He's highly exalted at the right hand of the Father. Jesus spoke to his disciples in Luke chapter 10, verse 23, and said, And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are their eyes which see the things that you see. Blessed are your eyes that see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. So Jesus, the Spirit of God, opened the eyes of his disciples to see the things that the prophets and those that went before could not see. He said, blessed are your eyes that you see. See, Jesus is the one that will reveal the Father. Jesus was the expressed image of the Father, and that's why he told his apostles and disciples, you see me, you're seeing my Father. You're seeing my Father. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all, all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with them. Sickness and disease is oppression of the devil. Mental illness is oppression of the devil. 
Infirmity and pain is oppression of the devil. Jesus came by the power of the Holy Spirit to break, to break the, the sin and death, to destroy it, to break the powers of darkness off of people's lives. And when we look to the Lord, look only to the Lord, the Bible says, set your affections on him who sits at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. It's faith in the name of Jesus Christ. There's only one faith, and that's in Jesus Christ and him alone. The other, there's no other faith but the faith that's in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In John chapter 3, verse 13, it states, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Now, John chapter 6, verse 31, Jesus said to them, he said, Our fathers did eat manna. In the desert, as it is written, he that gave, or the disciples were saying that, excuse me. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread and from heaven to eat. Jesus replied and said to them, Verily I say unto you, Moses gave you that bread from heaven. But my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. So he's a living bread from heaven. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. God was made flesh. And so the true bread was Jesus Christ, the living God the living word of God. He came with the word of his father. He said, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And his word is life everlasting. His commandment is life everlasting. Hallelujah. Verse 34, it states, Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Because Jesus is the one that gives you living water. He's called the fountain of living waters. Hallelujah. Verse 36. But I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. This is some of the, the Jewish people. And the Pharisees, they didn't believe in him. Verse 37, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. Notice how Jesus spoke. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that comes to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven... Notice how Jesus is saying, I came down from heaven. He's acknowledging where he came from. I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I'll raise him up at the last day. So Jesus is the one that will raise you up at the last day. If a person received Jesus as Lord and Savior in this lifetime, and their physical body dies and goes into the grave, Jesus Christ will raise you from that graveyard and give you a glorious body like his as the resurrection from the dead. That is a promise of eternal salvation, spirit, 
soul, and physical body. Now, when Jesus spoke to those that would not fear God, he said to fear God that who's able to put soul and body into hell. That's the rejection of Jesus Christ. And those that, that try to kill you and to destroy you for, the, for his name's sake. He said they to fear God who's able to put soul and body into hell. So when people try to destroy a true believer in Jesus Christ, to try to kill them, they're in danger of hell fire, eternal damnation. They're touching God's anointed ones. They're touching God's child. So you become a child, a child of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All were under sin. A person is either a child of God by faith in Jesus Christ or they're a child of the devil according to 1 John. And the devil sinneth from the beginning. All unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. And God spoke through the prophets. He said, forsake your way. Let the unrighteous man forsake his way. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let them return to the Lord and he will abundantly pardon. There has to be an, an acknowledgement in our own heart of turning from sin and turning to the Lord and receiving Him as Lord and Savior, making Him the Lord and Savior of your life. And when the Spirit of God comes in you, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. And the newness is the Spirit of the living God living inside your spirit. And the desires of God fill your heart. The Word of God comes alive. See, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to those that the God of this world, which is the devil, a small g, has blinded their mind from believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ, lest the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ shine into them. See, Jesus is not willing for you to perish, but come to repentance. Repentance means to reconsider, to come back, to turn, to turn the direction you're going in life. Hallelujah. In John 6, 38, now we just finished that, excuse me. Uh, John 12, verse 26, it states, If any man serve me, as Jesus speaking, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Notice how Jesus is saying, If any man serve me, him will my father honor. The word of God also states, He that honors the son honors the father that sent him. So when we deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow Jesus, we are identifying what he finished at the cross. That is the foundation of a believer in Jesus Christ. Their foundation is in what he accomplished at the cross and the justifying blood and the power of his resurrection and that he's been glorified at the right hand of the Father and poured out the Holy Spirit and received him as Lord and Savior and living for him and confessing him before men and not being ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it is the power of God unto salvation. The power of God unto deliverance and healing. His power begins to manifest in every aspect of your life. Hallelujah. Now in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 it states, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So when people believe in a foreign God, that God cannot save you. That God cannot raise you from the dead. There's only one God, one mediator between God and man, that man, Christ Jesus the Lord. 
He is the one that gives you eternal life and life forevermore. Hallelujah. Galatians 1.18 states, But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So if someone's preaching another gospel unto you that says you don't have to repent, they're preaching another gospel. The Word of God states in Luke 24 that repentance and remission of sin is to be preached in His name to all the nations of the world. All the nations of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's faith in Jesus Christ, what he finished at the cross, his resurrection, that you receive eternal life. Hallelujah. In Philippians 3, verse 20 to 21, it states, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he's able even to subdue all things unto himself. That is so awesome. Jesus came for the whole person, spirit, soul, and body. He values you so much He gave his whole life for you to put his life inside you and to bring you to the Father because the Word of God says he appeared before the Father for every person because his justifying blood covers it all. The Bible says where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. And grace is God's merited favor. You cannot earn salvation, no matter how hard you try. It's by grace you're saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a free gift of God. Jesus is the gift given to you, and that gift paid a big price on Calvary's cross for everyone's soul. And we're never to deviate through the message of the preaching of the cross of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to those that believe. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 9, 24, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. He appears in the presence of God for us. Hallelujah. When the Father, when you've received him as Lord and Savior, the Father is, when he looks at you, he sees a finished work that Jesus finished at the cross. Hallelujah. You become his child. You're joined unto the Lord by one spirit. That's the spirit of Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter 12, we'll go there a little bit. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. Let's start at verse 22. But you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven and to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. Notice, just men made perfect. Jesus is a justifier of the unjust, and he's the one that makes you just and perfect because it was a finished work on Calvary by the blood that was shed. Hallelujah. The Bible declares without the shedding of the blood, there's no remission of sin. Verse 24, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. 
For if they escaped not who refused him that spoke on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. The word of God states in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, Wherefore, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Glory to God. This is your day to have this message being preached to you. This might have been the first time you ever turned on this program to times of refreshing. Jesus Christ loves you. He loves you so much. He took your, your place at the cross. He took your penalty and your judgment at the cross to make you free to bring you into the newness of life that is in in His Spirit, the Spirit of God's Son. When you receive Him, the Spirit of God's Son will enter your heart and you'll become born again. You'll be born again of the incorruptible Word of God that lives and abides forever. You'll begin to hunger and thirst for righteousness and God will begin to fill you. See, there'll become a thirst inside your heart to know the truth. There's many out there, you've been looking here and there, and you're dissatisfied inside. That dissatisfaction is God's showing you you're lost and you're in need of a Savior. Open up your heart right now and say, Jesus, I believe that you truly are the Son of God, that you came and gave your life a sacrifice on the cross. And by the shedding of your blood, you forgave me of all sin. And the Father raised you from the dead. I believe what I'm hearing today, Jesus, and I receive you as my Lord and Savior to live for you in your holy gospel in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching Times of Refreshing. God bless you. If you would like to support Times of Refreshing, please make donations to Victory Christian Church, care of Times of Refreshing, at 112 Pine Street, West Union, Iowa, 52175. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.